Car dealerships suck. I know, I used to work in one. The dealership sales model can be predatory, overly complicated, and exploitive. My dealership horror stories are usually met with a, well, yeah, that's car dealerships, but what can you do? But then along came Tesla with its direct sales model and cast a harsh light on the traditional dealership experience. The Tesla buying experience isn't perfect, but compared to buying at a dealership with their markups and high pressure sales tactics, it's no wonder many comments on our videos are people asking why automakers won't just sell directly to consumers like Tesla does. The short answer is that, right now, the law in the United States doesn't allow it. So let's take a look at how we got here and where we might be going, because the system as it is now doesn't seem to be working in the best interests of consumers. And it's becoming clear that automakers are pretty pissed off at the way dealers are behaving today too. Despite what many of you think and tell us, Automakers aren't complicit with markups by dealerships, which the automaker never sees a dime of. The reason you can't just buy a new F-150 Lightning directly from Ford comes back to company founder Henry Ford engaging in exploitive business practices. Ford and his contemporaries in the US Big Three abused their dealer franchisees in a variety of ways, which is where we get the auto dealer franchise protection laws we have today. Yes, in addition to his extreme even by the standards of the time anti-Semitism and other questionable views, Ford really didn't care if dealerships got screwed, because capitalism. Before we move on, and especially for those outside the US, it's important to remember that the United States has a complicated mishmash of laws, with each state having its own legal system in addition to federal laws that apply nationwide. Interestingly, while there are federal laws that provide some protection to auto dealership franchises, most, if not all, state laws are more stringent. This makes sense when you think about the fact that auto dealerships can be influential businesses on a local and statewide level, and they're relevant in every state and nearly every county, while automakers aren't. It's worth noting here that consumer protections weren't a focus, or even really a consideration in the development of the laws that protect auto dealerships from their manufacturers. We see one consequence of that in the fact that automakers can't stop dealerships from price gouging and adding big markups to in-demand vehicles, though they aren't completely without leverage, more on that later. Their previous misbehavior led to the laws that prevent them from influencing or punishing dealers based on how the dealership prices its cars. The Federal Trade Commission did a study that found these sorts of laws actually increase consumer costs by reducing competition, and powerful auto dealer unions with plenty of money are more than happy to spend lots of it supporting political candidates so they have a metaphorical backdoor into favorable legislation. Because of Ford and his contemporaries' previous abusive practices, most states have laws to stop an automaker opening its own sales facility or selling directly to consumers, because of the threat doing so would pose to its existing dealership franchisees. But in many states, therein lies a loophole for the likes of Tesla, Lucid, Rivian, and others. They never had an existing dealership network to threaten. In Tesla's early days, it was pretty limited in terms of where it could legally sell its cars, and as the company grew in popularity, dealership associations moved to strengthen those restrictions. In Michigan in 2014, it looked like Tesla might be able to sell directly to consumers despite existing laws. So a state lawmaker with ties to Legacy Auto, not hard to find in Michigan, of course, managed to remove a single word from the state law that changed its meaning in such a way that Tesla couldn't sell or service its vehicles there. That restriction stayed in place for nearly six years. In Tesla's home state of Texas, it isn't currently legal for Tesla to sell cars directly to its customers. Instead, customers have to technically take possession in a neighboring state and then transfer their ownership to Texas. 
That sometimes means doing so on paper only, but even so, it's a logistical hassle born out of protectionist policies pushed by dealers. Through a combination of loopholes and legal wrangling on the part of Tesla and a few other startup automakers, there are now more states in the US where you can buy and take possession of a Tesla than ones where you can't. Moreover, other companies are walking through the legal doors it's opened, though in some states, those doors are explicitly Tesla-shaped, and other automakers have to get their own individual exemptions to direct sales bans. But stop. Let's go back for a moment and look at why Tesla went with direct sales in the first place. In a 2012 blog post, Elon Musk called out auto dealers' conflict of interest, saying, quote, it is impossible for them to explain the advantages of going electric without simultaneously undermining their traditional business. This would leave the electric car without a fair opportunity to make its case to an unfamiliar public." End quote. And he was right, at least according to a 2014 investigation by Consumer Reports. It found many dealers that had electric vehicles were nonetheless uninformed about EVs and prone to steering customers towards internal combustion engine vehicles. And in many dealerships, things haven't changed in the years gone by. It just happened to a family member of mine. So that's where we are right now. You can buy a Tesla direct from Tesla in many states, but not all, though the company has worked hard to make buying in a non-legal state as painless as possible. You can buy EVs from other automakers that have never had franchises in the US in a slightly smaller number of states. But due to laws designed to protect dealerships from automakers, and written without any real regard for the concerns of consumers, you can't buy an EV directly from a legacy automaker anywhere in the US. Though it isn't actually banned under federal law from what I understand, but remember, I'm very much not a lawyer. From where I sit, there are a few likely possibilities for what comes next. The first, and in my mind, less likely option is that we will see either superseding federal law, which I imagine would need to go through the Supreme Court, that invalidates state-level laws preventing direct sales, or we see a wave of states repealing their pro-dealership protectionist laws to the same effect. I don't think that's going to happen, though. Dealerships remain significant economic engines in their community, and thus have a lot of influence with state lawmakers. That hasn't changed just because less than 5% of new cars last year were sold outside the dealership system. It's also possible that things stay pretty much as they are right now. If legacy automakers can bring truly compelling EVs to market quickly, or the public's desire for electric vehicles falls off, then Tesla and other newcomers might stay under 10% market share, and everyone involved might be happy not to rock the boat and risk legal changes going against their interests. Also, while automakers can't legally influence what dealerships charge, they can have some leverage in the form of vehicle allocations. GM has announced recently that dealers who add huge markups could be in violation of their dealer sales and service agreement, and dealerships found to be doing so may be cut off from receiving the most in-demand and thus most marked up vehicles. I'd be surprised if we don't see that challenged in court though. Dealers are clearly feeling threatened by direct sales, and with the National Automotive Dealer Association saying it's now, quote, all in on electric vehicles, I think we will start to see a shift towards dealerships embracing EVs. That's gonna mean a restructuring of how dealerships make their money though. Since EVs have such lower maintenance costs, and new car sales are sometimes a loss leader for the money-making service department. Personally, I'm betting on revenue sharing between automakers and dealerships for in-car ongoing subscription services to offset losses in servicing fees, as well as higher margins on new car sales. With the growth of Tesla and other newcomers to the US market, I expect to see a full court press against direct sales in the coming few years from NADA and I wouldn't be shocked to see Tesla forced into the dealer model, rather than things going the other way around. After all, as right as Elon Musk was about why Tesla had to launch without dealerships, the company succeeded in changing people's views on electric cars, and today those concerns might not weigh on him so heavily. That's not what I want to see, of course. I'd love to never set foot in a dealership ever again. 
But the system is so entrenched in the US economic, legal, and social tapestry that I think we may be stuck with it for a long time to come. That's it for today. Thank you for watching, and we'll be back soon with more. If you liked the video, be sure to give it a thumbs up, and don't forget to leave your thoughts below or in our free to join Discord chat room. There's a link in the video description. If you haven't already, make sure you subscribe to this channel and our other channel, Transfer Evolve Take Two, and give the bell a tap so you know when our next video goes live. Thanks on behalf of the entire T crew, go out to the folk on my right for being our $15 to $49 a month patrons. Special thanks to our $50 a month patrons, Chris Maxwell, Brian Newton, Jason Boder, Dave Kitchen, Michael Goad, Ricky Long, Andrew Martin, Guido Jorhada, Brophy Wolf, Tesla Nagong, Gordon C., Stephen O'Donoghue, Kyle Hodson, Anthony Coates, Regine Fellows, Rory Litwin, Anonymous Freak, Jim Burness, and Denny Hyde. And our deepest gratitude to our $100 a month Patreon supporters, Marcel Ward, Reggie Watts, Joe Bresny, J.P. Fagerback, Will Graylin, Matthew Drobnak, John Lyons, Christopher Lee Jones, Laura Reynolds, Paul Conway, Ellery Hensley, and Ian. Feeling left out? You can join Patreon at the link below or share your support through our Bitcoin, Kofi, or our cool swag store. More links to those below. Thanks for joining me, and as always, keep evolving!